Good morning. Welcome to Pilgrim Church. Pilgrims on this journey, you are welcome here. You are loved. You are beloved. In the fullness of who you are, we are glad that you are here with us. In the Zoom, or in the room, or on YouTube, Folks who speak differently, vote differently, look different. Singles, couples, and families. New or long time. Sad or joyful, doubtful or convinced. You are welcome here. People of every race, nationality, religious background, educational background, ethnicity, age, gender identity, sexual orientation, marital status, economic status, and physical and mental and emotional ability, you are welcome and beloved here. We are glad that you are here right now so that we may journey together. We have a few announcements for the life of our church. 
One thing that you have already noticed is today is our first day in which masks are optional but supported. And so you will see um, if you are here physically in the sanctuary that people are in different places on that. This is a great moment to check in with your neighbors and especially after worship is over and we're all uh, chit-chatting. Um, if you happen to notice that your neighbor is wearing a mask, you might say, would you feel more comfortable if I put my mask back on? That's gonna make everyone's, uh, everyone's comfort level. We're gonna meet each other where each of us are. Um, and we'll note that for communion next Sunday, the servers will be masked for communion, just to let you know um, that that will be the case. I also want to let you know that uh, we have a mission committee meeting today at 1230 and we have one of our most exciting moments in our Lenten series on creation care, climate justice and the renewal of the earth. Fran Ludwig is coming to talk with us on Zoom on Wednesday evening for Bible study. I even made up a, like a little poster and it's in the narthex. So if you wanna take a poster and give it to your friends, um, or if you wanna email your friends, please invite them. I think this is gonna be a really wonderful opportunity for us to hear from one of Lexington's great climate activists. Fran is a member of the Roman Catholic Collaborative um, here in Lexington of the Roman Catholic communities. And, um, and I've known her for a little while and I'm so glad to know her and to hear everything that's going on, um, both from the perspective of her faith and also um, around local climate action. So don't forget Wednesday, seven o'clock, on Zoom, please attend. It's going to be wonderful. Sarah, what are the other announcements today? Um, we're also looking for readers for Maundy Thursday and volunteers to deliver Easter flowers. Talk to me about those. And now we will continue with worship. Uh, Jeff Beam is our liturgist today. Good morning. Please join me in the call to worship as printed in your bulletin. Neighbors, if you lift your net and it is empty, come here. We'll cast it out again into Christ's abundance. If, you're op if you open your eyes but do not recognize the Holy One, come here. We'll find our God in all creation. If your life is filled with mourning, Come here, the Spirit is leading in hands of joy. Come here, friends, to give blessing and honor and glory to God. Please join me now in the prayer of confession as printed in the bulletin. Holy God, from your word we learn there is enough for all if we would learn to share it. Your earth is a wonder of abundance and fertility, Yet greed, scarcity, and desire for power continue to grip your children. Turn us from greed to generosity, from scarcity to sharing, from power over to power with. In humility, we confess to harming your creation and your children. God, our maker, so move us by the wonder of creation that we repent and care more deeply. In your grace, turn us toward love. Amen. Pilgrims, this is the good news. In Christ we are forgiven. In Christ we are given each day a new start, a new opportunity to live following in Christ's footsteps. Thanks be to God, amen. And now please join me in the passing of the peace. Peace be with you. And let us share the peace of Christ with one another, turning and waving, saying hello to our neighbors and our friends on Zoom. Good morning, peace. 
We'll now turn to the scripture reading. The scripture reading today is from Deuteronomy 10, verses 12 through 22, adapted from the Inclusive Bible. Listen now for the word of God. And what now, Israel, does God ask of you? Only this, that you stand in awe of God, that you walk in all of God's ways, that you love and serve God with all your heart and soul, and that you keep the commandments and obey the statutes of God, statutes which, for your good, I lay down today. To God belongs heaven and the highest of heavens, the earth and all that it contains. Yet the Almighty so loved your ancestors that you, their descendants, were chosen before all other peoples, and so it still is today. Sensitize your hearts, therefore, and bend your will. For our God is the God of gods, the sovereign of sovereigns, the great God, powerful and awe-inspiring, who has no favorites and cannot be bribed who brings justice to the orphan and the widowed, and who befriends the foreigner among you with food and clothing. In the same way, you too must befriend the foreigner, for you were once foreigners yourselves in the land of Egypt. It is God most high whom you must serve with awe, whom you must cling to, and by whom you must swear who is your praise, who is your God, who has done great things which your eyes have seen with awe. Your ancestors went down into Egypt 70 strong, and God has made you as numerous as the stars of the heavens. Here ends our readings. Hear what the Spirit of God is saying to the church. Thanks be to God.
Okay, it's time for our children's message if children want to come up. Good morning. How are you guys today? Good. So I already put our word up for today because it's a little bit of a long one. What does today's word say? Neighbors. God bless our neighbors. Now, what does that word mean, neighbor? It means like the person who lives with you. I mean, um, person who lives um, next to you, person who lives with you. Um, friend. Mm -hmm. The person who lives next to you or with you or friends. So a neighbor can be someone who lives close by, but a neighbor can also mean a little bit more than that. Have you guys heard of the golden rule? Yes. yes. What's the golden rule? Treat others how you want to be treated. And in the Bible, Jesus says, love thy neighbor as yourself. Now, when Jesus says that, do you think he was talking about just the people that you live close by? No. no. When he's talking about neighbors, he's talking about everybody, right? Whether it's someone down the street or across the world. Now, today we're going to talk about something that's a little bit hard. I really hope with all of my heart that you feel safe and loved at your home and in your country. But unfortunately, there are a lot of people who don't feel safe where they live. And some may even have to move far away from their homes to find a new place to live, whether it's because of a natural disaster, like a flood or a fire, or sometimes even war. Yes? I I think I know about a few, a lot of people you're talking about. Mm -hmm. The Russian attack on Ukraine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so in Ukraine right now, a lot of people had to move away from their homes, right? Because they didn't feel safe. And that's really hard to think about, right? To leave your home behind. And if you think about these people and you think about the golden rule, how do you think that we should treat them? What should we do for them? Well, um, them, uh, food and shelter. Or and get water. Provide them food and shelter and water. Those are all great things. So to help us remember our message for the day, I thought we could put up a map. You think you could help me put up the map, Devin? Because we want to remember that people all around the world are loved, right? Put it here. This one fell down a little bit. Maybe we can. Okay, so before we head downstairs, let's say a prayer for our neighbors. 
Dear God, we feel your, your love like a warm hug. Help us to love others the way you love us. Protect and comfort those who feel unsafe at home and guide us to support and to care for and to treat them as we'd like to be treated. God bless our neighbors in our towns, in our country, and all over the world. Amen. Thank you, Sarah, and thank you, choir. And Max is moving our bulletin board because a little bit later in the service, we are going to have a truly hybrid moment of worship when we have someone on Zoom um, offering a mission moment. So I wanna make sure that y'all can see the screen for the Zoom. Would you pray with me? Oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts together be always acceptable in your sight, for you are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. She appears in my dreams. A decade ago, she appeared in my dreams for the first time, and I still remember encountering her there in my dreams and she still appears there some nights. She is a refugee, a sojourner, and a stranger. Deuteronomy is part of the identity building of the Israelites. They are a newly liberated people having been enslaved for 400 years in Egypt and they have spent a long time walking in the wilderness and listening to God and figuring out how to live in covenant as a liberated people with a special relationship to God. And Deuteronomy tells them, walk in God's ways, love and serve God and remember where you have come from. Let where you have come from and what God has done for you inform what you will do for others. And if you're listening carefully to this passage from Deuteronomy, it might sound very familiar. That's because some of its themes come up over and over again. You know that in the season of Lent, we have started from Matthew 25 in a series on creation care and environmental justice suggested by Reverend Emma Brewer-Wallen, who is the Minister for Economic and Environmental Justice for our conference. We started with Matthew 25, where Jesus asks his followers to tend to the most vulnerable and marginalized, the hungry, the thirsty, the naked, the imprisoned, the sick, and the stranger, connecting those invitations to concern with creation care and climate change is our shared Lenten journey. And today's reading from Deuteronomy has a lot of parallels to Matthew 25. Love and serve God to whom the earth belongs, who brings justice to the orphan and the widowed, who befriends the foreigner among you with food and clothing, in the same way you too must befriend the foreigner, for you were once foreigners yourselves in the land of Egypt. In another translation, it says, love the stranger, love the stranger, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. Remember you were a foreigner in the land of Egypt. Let that inform how you treat strangers and sojourners. 
I think that imperative is at its core a commandment to empathy. And it's not just about doing good, it is about what is good for the people. You don't have to look very far in the Hebrew Bible or in the Christian Testament to find this theme repeated over and over. You shall not wrong or oppress a resident alien, for you are aliens in the land of Egypt. That's Exodus 22. The alien who resides with you shall be to you as the citizen among you. You shall love the alien as yourself, for you are aliens in the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. That's Leviticus. We don't usually talk about Leviticus in church unless the pastor is mad, but there it is. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing so, some have entertained angels without knowing it. That's Hebrews 13. Befriend this foreigner, love the stranger, show hospitality, do good for your own good, remembering that God was good to you. But what in the world does this have to do with creation and climate justice? Simply put, creation, excuse me, climate change has created a refugee crisis. How can we care for the stranger, the traveler, the refugee displaced by climate change? That's the question for today. And so I come back to my dream. She appears in my dreams. A decade ago, she appeared in my dreams for the first time, and I still encounter her there some nights. She is a refugee. Some of you know that in the years before I came to Pilgrim Church, I was basically bivocational. In addition to church ministry, I spent a lot of time on climate action. And indeed, it has been a pretty big shift to focus solely on parish ministry. I was a climate activist in part because of dreams that I had a decade ago. The kind of dreams that woke me up in the middle of the night, dreams about the world that I would leave to my child, and dreams about someone else. Habiba, a young Somali girl, started to appear in my dreams after I read about her on the Church World Service website. In the summer of 2011, she had to walk with her family to a Kenyan refugee camp. They were there because they could not find food in the midst of the worst famine and drought in their area in 60 years. They were among 400,000 drought refugees that summer and among 13 people endangered by that drought. Their story was told by Church World Service's Sammy Matua, which is how I learned her name. Habiba, he said at the time, might not reach adulthood because of climate change. Let the little children come to me and do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of heaven belongs. There's a folk tale, and I know that you know it, where the townspeople see a baby floating past the town in the river, and they run down to the river and they grab that baby, right? They grab that baby and they rescue that baby because we all would rescue that baby. And then they see more babies floating down the river and they all run to the river and they start to grab those babies. And then one of them says, I've got to go up the river and stop whoever it is that's throwing babies in the river. Church World Service focuses on the needs of people on the ground but like the people in that folktale, they have been looking up river. They have been trying to figure out who's throwing the babies in the river. It's very clear, they say, people need to know that the impact of climate change is here with us and it is hitting the most vulnerable people in the world the hardest. Church World Service has more that has for more than a decade 
called on the US government and the UN to take leadership on mitigating climate change through reducing carbon emissions. The late Archbishop Desmond Tutu called on the international community to act on climate change for the sake of the children in the most vulnerable regions of the world. And all of that was already true a decade ago. Here's the update. By some reports, and this is the conservative one, 26 million people worldwide are displaced annually by weather disasters. The UN Commission on High, High Commission on Refugees thinks there may be as many as 100 million folks annually displaced by climate change related disasters. That's a lot. Right now we are focusing a lot of attention on the emergency of many millions of people displaced from Ukraine. And that is right and proper. We have to focus our attention there. But climate change related displacement has been happening on a larger scale every single year for many years. And it is also an emergency. It is happening in North America and in South America, in Asia and in island countries, in Africa and in Europe. The only reason that climate change refugees are not coming from Antarctica is because no one lives permanently in Antarctica. A decade ago, children were keeping me up at night. Habiba, a beloved daughter of God who in 2011 had no place but a tent to live, no reliable source of food or water because of climate change. And I was thinking about Zachary, my own child and another of God's children, whose world is going to be defined by climate change. And I was thinking about every single one of our children, our grandchildren, the world's children. In 1 John, we are told that if we love God, we will love one another and love God's children. And if we love God's children, should we not make the earth safe for them? All over the Bible, we are told to care for the stranger, remembering that we have been strangers, to welcome the traveler because in doing so, we are welcoming Jesus himself. But our faith calls us not just to welcome the stranger once they arrive at our doorstep, but to ask what we can do to prevent them from becoming refugees in the first place. Habiba is still in my dreams, though I do not know what became of her. I promised a challenge every week and good news. This week the challenge is really hard and the good news is hard to find. But first, here's the challenge. First, we are challenged to do what we can to serve the needs of those already displaced from their homes, whether by violence like those from Tigray fleeing to Sudan, those from Ukraine fleeing to other countries, or those displaced by storm, flood, drought, or famine. Second, to reduce our own impact on this planet and to call upon our leaders to support mitigation and adaptation measures. In other words, to go up the river. A member of a nearby church used to start every single prayer time with the same exact prayer. He would say, I pray for swift and sensible action on global climate change. What I realize today is that his prayer was a prayer of well-being for Habiba and for every climate refugee around the world. It is hard to find good news about the refugee crisis in these days, but, but there is good news. There is good news where we make it. There is good news wherever people are offering hospitality, which they are, wherever people are befriending the stranger, which they are. There is good news every time 
we take an effort that lowers our carbon emissions and builds climate resiliency. And that is all happening, thank God. But perhaps we need to make more good news. We need to make more good news. As Howard Zinn once wrote, if we see only the worst, it destroys our capacity to do something. If we remember those times and places, and there are so many where people have behaved magnificently, this gives us the energy to act, and at least the possibility of sending the spinning top of a world in a different direction. May it be so. Amen. We are indeed going to gather some prayer concerns today. Folks who are on the Zoom, I hope that you are putting your prayer concerns in the chat. I'm gonna to come to you in just a minute. And folks who are in the sanctuary, I hope you will lift up the prayers of your hearts this day. What are your prayers today? Lisa and then Bruce. Oh, Bruce first. Thanksgiving for the day itself. Thanksgiving for the day itself. Yes. Lisa. Thanksgiving um, for um, our daughter Chloe uh, and her partner Lily, who are both PhD students in climate science. They are our future generation in terms of hopefully turning the tide on, um, on this situation. So, For Chloe and Lily, who are working on climate science, we give thanks. Sandy. I, uh, this isn't Thanksgiving, but I think we should pray for those who have chronic illnesses. For those who have chronic illness, yes. And those whose names we know, those whose names we don't. I want to particularly, with that, lift up Lydia, who asked us to pray for her yesterday, last week. She asked for our prayers, and we do continue to pray for her. Are there others that you would lift up? Ed. Rebe, I want to thank you for your sermon and your passionate commitment to climate change and for asking me and everyone here, what more good news can we as a congregation, as, as individuals contribute to the cause? Thank you. I wanna lift up um, a family who uh, lost a member in a house fire this week, and his name was David. Um, prayers for his family. We pray for Isabel continuing treatments for leukemia. We pray for S continuing cancer treatments. We pray for everyone in cancer treatments. We know a lot of them these days. I'm coming over to the Zoom. Steve offers prayers for all refugees and others who are homeless. Prayers that they find compassion and kindness. Prayers for Anne and her cousin who is suffering from pancreatic cancer.
and happy birthday to Son May. That is today, that is right, that is today. Happy birthday, Son May. Folks are clapping for you. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Let us, let us bring all of these prayers to God. Let us pray. God of love and mercy, we bring our whole selves before you this day. We bring our joys and thanksgivings for the day, for the beauty of the earth, for the wonders of your creation. And we bring before you our worries, our anxieties, and all that weighs us down. We give you thanks for those who are working for the good of their neighbors and for the good of all people around the world. We lift up thanksgiving for those who are studying huge problems, believing in and working towards solutions, including Chloe and Lily. We give you thanks for those who are working on medical solutions to huge problems. For every cancer researcher and every person who is involved in cancer treatments, we give thanks because we have placed in their care and in your care so many people that we love. For Anne and her friend with pancreatic cancer, for Isabel, Isabel, for S, for so many more that we know who stand in need of healing. We pray for them this day. We pray, O oh God, for those whose lives are turned upside down by war, by climate change. Make our actions be a blessing to those in deepest need. Show us how to offer hospitality to strangers and foreigners and neighbors and refugees, to those who are in need simply of kindness and those who are in need of homes and new lives. Grant that we may be voices of dignity and hope. And give us courage, O oh God, when the work seems too hard to nonetheless do whatever we can to do good for our neighbors, remembering how good you have been to us. We pray for anyone who is ill, and especially those with chronic illnesses, and especially our dear friend Lydia. We pray, O oh God, for peace. We pray for peace in every place where there is violence and war. We pray for an end to the invasion of Ukraine. We pray 
that the minds of every leader in this world would be moved by peace and justice. That hearts would be turned toward peace and justice. We pray, O oh God, this day, knowing that you hear every prayer of our hearts, spoken or unspoken, even when words simply will not come to us, you have given us words. And we pray the words that your son taught us, saying together, our creator who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This morning, Matt Sarajan is going to do a mission moment for us. So everybody hold on one second because we have to change a little bit of our technology so that everyone in the sanctuary and everyone on Zoom can hear from Matt. Thank you, everybody. Good morning. During our Lenten season, we are focusing on creation care. One way that we care for creation is through our financial support of Massachusetts Interfaith Power and Light. Pilgrim's Mission Committee chose to support Mass IPL with the congregation's generous Christmas Eve offering this year. And the committee wanted to tell you about this organization as we focus our attention on creation right now. Pilgrim is one of the hundreds of religious communities in the state that supports the important efforts of Massachusetts Interfaith Power and Light. For decades, Massachusetts Interfaith Power and Light has helped people of faith in our state to fulfill our responsibility to be caring stewards of our houses of worship, our homes, and the earth. As public advocates, the group calls on leaders to take meaningful action for climate justice, as well as racial and social justice. These activities include technical assistance with energy assessments, energy rebates and incentives, and sharing expertise and resources among faith communities, individuals, and elected officials. For example, the website offers prayers, meditations, and suggestions on actions we can take in our homes and daily lives to become better stewards of creation. We're glad to support Mass IPL through the generosity of the congregation. Thank you. This is just a word to everybody on Zoom um, that you too can be part of worship leadership. So call me up and let me know if you are interested in doing that. This congregation is always so generous and we're so thankful as we are still um, adjusting to being in person and online, I just wanna remind you of how you can support the ministries of the church. You can give by placing something in the offering plate in the back, you can give via our website or you can send a check in the mail and we are so grateful. And now we get more beautiful music this morning for our offertory. My love is my shepherd, I need nothing more. For she leads me into the lush pastures of green and beside the still waters. My life is renewed today, guiding me on the best paths of her way. Though I walk through the valley, 
valleys of darkness and fear, my love is with me. Let us pray. God of life, we worship you by being abundant and fruitful with our lives. We worship you by offering our gifts as if they were songs of joyful praise. Bless these gifts that they may lead to abundant life for all creation, for our neighbors and strangers alike. Amen. Now, our, our hymn today, in the bulb there is a flower, you might be thinking, hmm, this sounds like an Easter hymn, but it's really about believing that good news is coming. So let us sing number 433 in the New Century Hymnal. Let us pray our closing prayer. Creator God, this Lent we pray that you would move us to love. Love our neighbors next door and around the world. 
love your creation from the trees outside our windows to the ocean thousands of miles away. Love our children, those whose names we know, and those who will come seven generations from now. In love, may we protect, restore, and steward this beautiful world. In love, may we serve. Amen. And now, friends, hear this benediction. This season, let us have a heart for the earth, for all its creatures and all our neighbors. Let us dig into the dirt, walk upon the earth lightly, and renew this precious gift. Let us turn toward the one who created us out of the earth, doing justice, loving kindness, and walking humbly with the one who created us all. Amen.